say, I have started off by um, basically uh, printing out some different fonts. So the fonts that I've used for these, the top one is Wisdom Script and the bottom one is Baskerville Old Face. <laughs> Such funny names. But um, yeah, basically, are we, are we in shot or not? Hopefully it's light enough. I should have marked out really, shouldn't I? Teething problems, we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay. Hopefully we are. I don't know which way to move you. If that makes it worse or better. Can you move the camera over to the left a touch, lovely? Yeah, I'm, the camera's reversed, Kerry, so I'm a little... <laughs> oh, have you lost sound, Anna? Okay, so I need to work closer this way. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not saying anything while I'm doing this. Nothing of use anyway, so I'm just going to keep you, keep moving you until we've got you in shot. Perfect, that's where we need to be, right here. <laughs> Thanks guys. Anna, let me know if you've got sound back, or else you wouldn't really know that, would you? But yeah, any, anyone else, let me know if you haven't got sound. Hopefully you have. I'm just gonna bring the comments up. Hopefully, Anna, you just need to reload the page. Okay, I'm going to crack on and then if there's any problems, please just let me know and I'll keep an eye on the, on the comments. I can hear fine. Great. Sorry, Anna, it's just you. I hopefully um, just try refreshing the page, although she won't be able to hear that. I don't know why I keep saying it. Um, okay, so I've printed these out. Um, obviously, mess about with sizing however you want, but I'm, I'm not going to go into this too much today. Um, but basically, I use Word and then I copy it over to Paint. Uh, Microsoft Paint to just do a bit of um, moving around and to, to move the spacing a little bit um, but that's just me you can absolutely just do it from word if you want okay then I have just gone and got some just parchment and I have done the old that we all did in school where you go and on the reverse you trace it okay so it's really straightforward Use a sharp pen, go and sharpen your pencil because especially if you've got fine lines, you're really gonna to want to keep those lines as fine as possible. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. Okay. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind. Um, use a sharp pencil. If you're using a big fat chunky pencil, you're gonna get big fat chunky lines. And that's fine if that's the look you're wanting. If you're wanting something that's a bit more solid and um, especially on bigger size cakes, a lot of the times when I'm doing this, I'm doing it on a six inch diameter cake. Um, I always make them a little bit taller just to give, so I usually put um, an extra layer of sponge into that tier just to make sure, that, especially if it's calligraphy, because the calligraphy ones are quite sort of flowy and they take up quite a bit more space. And if you're putting then a cluster of flowers or anything down here, you don't want it to then cover all your beautiful calligraphy work. Other tip that I will just give you at this stage is to um, sugar paste your cakes the day before you need to do this. So let the sugar paste just firm up overnight because if not, you'll end up denting your cake, uh, denting your lovely sugar paste. So on here, basically just get it where you want it. So you can tape this on or just pop a, a few little pins if you want to make sure it's really held into space. But really, for, for the sake of time, we're just gonna go over it making sure it's not slipping anywhere. And as I mentioned about dents on your cake here, be careful where you're placing your fingers. Don't be pushing into your icing because even the day before, it will still sort of, you'll still be able to dent your icing. Okay, and I'm really just using the pencil on the side. So the tip of the pencil is not, I'm not going over it. Um, I'm just, put, the tip of the pencil is just lightly washing over so I'm not the pressure is really light okay and from there hopefully you can see my transfer has gone on um so it's really light um don't worry about the whole oh it's lead it's poisonous there hasn't been lead in pencils for like decades and decades um so try not to worry too much about that um it, it's graphite and it, it's fine it's it's such a trace amount graphite is fine so it's not they're not lead pencils or anything like that but um i know people do do worry about that kind of thing but um honestly it's 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 not an issue 
Okay, so I've got my outline there. What I'm going to do is, actually I'm just going to move a little bit this way, is just briefly talk about paints. Okay, so the edible paints that I'm using are made using a combination of petal dusts. So the things that we were using on the last demo to colour our leaves, etc. Um, so I'm using petal dusts from Squire's Kitchen today. So I'm going to do it in a deep blue so that you can see the contrast against the white. Um, so this one is uh, Wisteria and this one is Wedgwood Blue. I'm, I'm just going to use the Wisteria, but the reason I wanted to talk about the Wedgwood Blue is... I'm gonna go ahead and just put the, the dark color straight onto the white icing. If this scares the bejesus out of you, um, that's absolutely fine. What I did when I first started was I used a base color that was much, much lighter, and therefore, if I made a mistake, a lot easier to remove off the icing. It wasn't as obvious. Um, so when I first started, I would do a base layer in a much paler version of the color um, so you can either get a paler version or you can just get white with a teeny tiny bit of your main colour in it, like I mean a tiny bit. And then paint that first and then go over it once you can see really clearly um, where you need to be painting. So that is, that's why I would use the, the lighter one in case I wanted to just create a base coat for me to get to base on, to, for me to guide me. Um, so, but for now we're just going to use... The dark the dark blue so i'm also using uh, lemon extract from nilsa massey so this is my chosen this is what i prefer to use to mix my edible paints so that's whether i'm hand painting lettering whether i'm applying color wash anything like that this is what i tend to use you can use it basically needs to be a clear alcohol um the reason i use this it smells lovely but also um the alcohol content in it is much, much higher than, say, for example, if you use vodka. So you might see on some cake tutorials and cake blogs them advocating using like a, a, a vodka mix to mix your edible paint. You absolutely can do that. Um, but it because it's got a lower volt, lower alcohol content, there's more water in there, so it will take longer for your paint to dry. Now with this, we're wanting it to be quite precise. So we're wanting to avoid any bleeding um, of the color into your sugar paste outside of the area that you actually want to paint. So ideally we want it to have a lower water content for that. So I measure mine into my cap. I haven't measured it specifically, but um, you'll get used to the kind of consistency that you need. But rather than just pour straight from the bottle, because I've done that before and before I've known it, half the bottle's gone in and it's far too, far too watery. So I'm just mixing that. Now I'm using a different brush to the one I'm going to paint with, because typically the ones that you'll paint with will be um, really, really fine. And you can't really sort of make sure all those bits of... Um, dust have been fully dissolved with such a fine brush so we're just going for a slightly thicker one for this get rid of that okay brushes uh, just worth noting that because this has a really high alcohol content it does evaporate quite quickly so the consistency of this as you were the longer it takes you to paint the more the consistency of this will become thicker so don't be frightened to just add a little bit of top up in there so sometimes i'll just pop a little bit into the palette next to it so I can just dip my brush A to clean it and to get more liquid into it as it dries. Set these aside because close the lid and set it aside because if you knock either your liquid over or this it's such a messy job and you don't want it going on whatever you're painting. Okay brushes. So I have so so many brushes I don't want to show you how many because it's embarrassing but um Basically, for hand painting, you're going to want to make sure that you have an adequate brush, by which I mean that it is fine detailed enough. So um, I tend to use, uh, these are like typical brushes for me for hand painting. Hopefully you can see those. Um, so they're like the double zero brush or the treble zero brush are great. So look for that kind of thinness in your brushes. You can get these online. You can also get them um, from like hobby craft and sort of any crafting sort of sections of, um, I think, what's the other one? Oh, it escapes me now. It'll come to me that I've seen have a lot of nice brushes in as well. But you can, you know, just 
go on Amazon and see if you can buy like a set of them. The sets that I've seen tend to annoyingly be, um, like you'll maybe get two small brushes and then they'll start to go up in size. So be, be mindful of that. It might just be worth, once you've found one or two that work for you, just buy like five or six each of those. Um, but to get started, you really need just one or two um, to just try out. Because um, I've had students who get, you know, they just take to different brushes. So they, I might say, oh, these are the ones I use. And then I, obviously I've got a big selection and they might just struggle with it. So really, the other thing to notice is that some of these, I'll show you on here. Um, some of them have longer bristles than others. So I don't know if you can see that. The difference, it's really, really subtle. Um, but um, the difference in bristle length uh, will affect how much control you have over the brush and over where your paint is going. So just try a few different ones out. I don't know if my hand is catching up with me there. I don't know if you can see those. Yeah, I need to move up a little bit. So yeah, the difference in brush length will just affect that control. So just try a few out. Like I say, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another. And the difference can be quite subtle, but um, in, in the brush, I mean, but can make quite a big difference in sort of how, how comfortable you are with actually painting. So we've done this one. So I'm just going to leave that one there for now. Um, in fact, no, we will paint on this one and then we'll, so I'll just show you the fine lines because this one's a bit more precise than the calligraphy one. I've made them quite large and obviously it's worth noting, I know it sounds obvious, but when you're planning your cake, your lettering on your cake, um, I try to avoid having it on a top tier, especially, well, unless your top tier is six inch or, or wider because there's just not enough space and your lettering will be quite small, which makes it even more difficult to paint. So, just going to get some paint on there. So, you, I don't know if you can see the consistency of this, but it's already starting to thicken. And it's worth just having like a piece of paper towel or something next to you, um, just in case you get too much on your brush and you want to take the excess off, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side so you can see. I'm just going to, so always try and have your hand on something. Now, obviously this is more difficult than if it was, um, sorry, this is less difficult than if it was obviously on a cake because A, there's less risk. And also it's a different angle. So the angle at which you are painting, so I'm used to doing it on a cake, so this is a bit of a weird angle for me. So it, the temptation when you start is to be quite ooh, like hesitant, but really, it likes flowing lines. And obviously we're gonna fill all this bit in, in the middle as well, so. If you feel like you've got too much on your brush, you can just go ahead and get rid of the excess in that middle bit. Okay, so this is quite a, a um, it's like, it's not a really fine brush because these letters here are not particularly um, thin and wispy. I didn't want to show you a really thin and wispy one because I just don't know if you'd be able to see it properly. Please tell me if my um, head is in the way. So when you get to the bits where you're wanting it to be like a particular shape, so here there's like a little squared off bit, obviously just use a different part of your brush, by which I mean just the very tip. And obviously change the angle while you're practicing you can absolutely change the angle at which you work when you're on a cake it's not so easy but you can move yourself so move yourself around the worktop obviously at which you're working um, and have your cake on something so not on something that um, is going to move make sure it's static but have it on something that you can move around so you can get at it from the side and things like that. 
I've seen so many students struggle to get around their cake and I'm like, just move the cake around so you're not reaching over. Um, but obviously when you're learning and you're trying to think of a million different things, the sort of common sense elements can escape you sometimes. So obviously your first run at it, this is a really, really deep blue and obviously you don't need to do anything quite this dark. So the darker the color you have on your sugar paste, the more it will sort of, the more easily it will stay in your sugar paste. So the higher the risk. So again, bear that in mind when you're planning these in with your clients. Um, if they've got a color palette and it's there's a potential for a particularly um, dark color, perhaps if you're starting out, don't have that as your lettering if you're worried about it because, or do the light, light version of it underneath first because it can be a bit more risky if you make a mistake. So there are ways of sort of repairing things if you do make a mistake. So basically, if you, if the worst happens and you sort of completely, like say for example, you flicked your brush by mistake and a load of paint went, and you had a few droplets, you get a cotton bud, a clean cotton bud. I, I don't know about you guys, but I always have cotton buds in my repair kit. Um, for just that detail work. Get your cotton bud and in a clear palette, get some of your clear alcohol, dip your cotton bud in it and just gently rub over where you've, where you've painted. And it might, and let that dry, and it might need a, another go over. But obviously, if you are dealing with pastel colours, that's a lot easier to remove than it is something like this. So we're just building that, that width of the letter up. It is a bit fiddly. But some sections of letters can actually be quite nice and flowy and others are really sort of broken up and fiddly and you have to kind of just build build up the length of the letter there's no other way of doing it so i'm doing these at funnier angles than i would usually do so that i don't block the camera just going to do a little bit of repair on that bottom one this isn't quite how I want it yet. And obviously if you make one side a little bit fatter than it should be, don't worry, just go and make sure that it matches with, the, go and make the other side, the opposite side, fatter to match, so that it looks like it was meant to be like that. So quite often I'll have clients who have like a, like a wedding monogram or something like that. Um, so I've just tinily gone over the edge there. I'm just going to show you guys. So I'm just going to get this cotton bud and I'm just going to pinch at the end to make it a little bit pointed and I'm actually going to cut it. So I know you can get the pointy end ones but I don't have any of those at the moment. So I've just got this one. So I'm just going to get some clear alcohol. into one of my pockets. Okay, so pinch that so it's nice and all the cottons together. You don't want too much alcohol in here because I don't want it to bleed in. I'm just gonna take the edge off that there. It's just gone slightly over. And you can see it's just taken taken the bit of blue off there. Okay. And then just leave that to dry. So don't paint near there for a second while that dries off. Okay. Okay, so this is not a particularly fine brush, 
but it's not a particularly complex letter. And you could go back and touch that up with a much finer brush if you wanted. For example, it's got, this one's quite fine in the end. Okay, so my paint is getting quite thick now. So with every brush, I'm just dipping it into the lemon extract beforehand. So the finer brush then enables me to just get, are you still all there? Hopefully you are, just my builder just phoned me. I'm hoping you are. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you're still there. Excellent. You can absolutely see my fat head in, in this video, for which I apologize. <laughs> So once we're happy with that as a basis of the letter, we can obviously do any little touch-ups. You can come back to it as many times as you like, and quite often I will do. Once I've painted the whole thing, I'll just go back to each letter and make sure I'm happy. Um, so in here, there's a little and sign, which can be really tricky. So just make sure you're using a fine brush for these bits. And I find that I stop breathing <laughs> when I'm doing doing the detail bits. But once you get once you get the hang of doing this, it's a really lovely effect that you can put on to your cakes um, that personalizes them without them being sort of novelty. Um, you guys are obviously watching this backwards to me, aren't you? <laughs> Just realised that ampersand looks backwards to you. Um, so yeah, anyone that knows my cakes knows that I don't really, I don't do novelty wedding cakes, um, but it's that, that lovely way of still personalising a wedding cake to a couple without, um, you know, having sort of bride and groom cake toppers that look like them or there's nothing wrong with those uh, you know they're really cute and beautiful but they're ju it's just not my style so um sorry i had to stop talking there when i was doing that line it's not my style so this is my kind of way of um making couples feel that the cake is sort of really personal to them some couples don't they're not bothered they're just not not turned on by the initials at all or the lettering it's not for them and i totally get that this is a lovely brush for these letters actually because it's not it's quite a long tip that just flows and because the lettering, just these these particular letters have quite long sort of strokes to them, long sides, it, it works really well. Sorry, I keep thinking about my head in the shot, sorry. <laughs> So yeah, obviously I've shown I'm showing you the dark blue, and it is a sort of higher risk strategy because it if this get if this bleeds if you if your paint is too watery and it bleeds so it basically goes beyond where you want it to, um, it it can be a bit of a nightmare um, compared to the lighter ones which are a lot more easily removed. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but I have just, there are a couple of little dents in the sugar paste where my hand's just been resting on it. You just get your flexi smoother once this is dry and just smooth those out with your flexi smoother. It's absolutely fine. Um, obviously just try and be as mindful as you can as you're going along about dents. But unless you, the only way around it really is if you sugar paste and then 
two days later paint. Now if you're doing it on a display cake that's absolutely fine because you haven't got cake inside and you can leave it as long as you want between sugar pasting um, and painting on your cake. But if it's a, a real wedding cake then obviously your time scales might not allow for that long between sugar pasting and painting. So um, typically what I would do is sugar paste on one day, leave it overnight to firm up a little bit and then paint the next day. Um, I have been known in a pinch to paint the morning of the delivery. Because I'm quite quick at it and it doesn't stress me out, I can absolutely do that. I just have all my lettering printed out, my sort of stencil ready to go and it's just a case of painting the next morning. Um, it's sort of a half hour job for me. So um, you can absolutely do that but it depends on how long it takes you, how nervous you are you know, all that stuff. So yeah, you can absolutely do that. What I'm gonna do is pop that to one side and just show you the more calligraphy style. Now what's also interesting it is, so I'm gonna do this in a gold, I think, but what I'm gonna do first is actually just use this blue, because I know some of you quite liked the, um, the gold lettering that I did on the blue background. So I'm just gonna show you that. Because gold is quite difficult to show up on the white. It, it's beautiful in real life, but through the camera, it, you kind of have to be at a certain angle for it to catch. So um, what I'm gonna do is paint a blue background first. It will literally take a few minutes to dry. So I'm just using a fatter brush here. Now on the one that I put in the event, I think it was on there, or the one of the reminders anyway, it was actually, um, I didn't brush it on, it was sponged on to create a different sort of effect. But I don't have any sponges to hand right now, so this is getting brushed on. So that is touch dry already. I'm just gonna leave it another minute or two uh, while I get my gold mixed. Now the thing to note is, if you are using a darker sugar paste, either just a darker sugar paste or you're painting and then you know, you're know watercoloring and then painting lettering on top of it, um, it does make your pencil outline of your lettering trickier to see. So you have to make sure that you are doing it in a well lit area. Don't be doing it on an evening because you just won't be able to see where you're supposed to be painting. Um, so yeah, do, make sure you're doing it with some actual re real daylight falling onto your cake so that you can see exactly where you need to paint. So I'm using the fake, is it Cahill or Carhill? I never know which way to pronounce her name. Um, Car Hill, I think it is. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Lord. On any other day, I would choose a, a different way of pronouncing it. So who knows? <laughs> well, she'll know, but yeah. Um, so I'm just popping a little bit of gold into here. So this is a luster dust. So the petal dust that we used before are like petal dust or craft dust. They're matte. Um, whereas this is sparkly. So it's got a beautiful luster to it. Again, we're just gonna pop some in there and then we're gonna pop some lemon extract in. So you, some of you might have used these luster dust to actually luster your whole tier of your cake. Um, what I would say is that you perhaps need a slightly thicker consistency for the lettering, again, because we're wanting it to sort of stay put on the cake where we put it. Um, that one's just a bit runny, which I do sometimes. So I'm just gonna create a bit of a separate pool here, which I'll work from and then keep taking from this one as I go. So that's the kind of, so this is quite watery and this is much thicker. It's not thick to the point where I can't move it or it's, it's staying where it is so when I move it in the palette 
it flows back to where it was. I don't want to sort of pull my brush through it and it for it to not move and it for it to stay. I want it to still be flowy because I want it to flow where I want it to go, but I also don't want it so runny that it goes everywhere else too. Okay, so put our luster aside, we're putting our lemon extract aside. And then we're going to trace into this. So like I said, it will be a bit trickier to see where the lettering is supposed to go. Sometimes you might just have to sense check. So I always keep the original um, printout of the lettering, especially if it's a more complex, um, if it's like quite a detailed monogram and there's lots of bits in it. Um, I will say that as, as you paint more, if any of you have done sort of handwritten calligraphy, you get more and more used to knowing the flow of the letters and how they flow into each other. Um, so it is less sort of confusing of like, where am I supposed to be going now? Um, it, it, it's a bit more intuitive. You, you just get used to knowing where things are supposed to, like how the S will go and how, the, how things will loop. But you can see, you can still see, hopefully, you guys can still see that. When my camera catches up in a minute, you'll be able, yes, you can still see that. Okay, so you can still see that. Obviously, the darker you go with the background, the harder it is. And obviously, this is quite a thick outlined one because, again, I didn't want to make it too thin and wispy for you, even though you absolutely can do thin and wispy fonts. Some of my favourite ones are those. In fact, I wanted you to be able to actually see it from the camera. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get my paint palette. So you'll obviously have realised by now that there's some thicker bits and there's some thinner bits. I'm going to move you over again, starting here. So especially with the luster ones, because when the when the matte paint dries, it kind of, it there's nothing that will lift off, off it easily. I mean, if you were to stick your whole hand on it, it would, you know, it could smudge it, definitely. Um, so be careful if you're painting and then stacking. Um, but with the luster, there is always like that bit of sort of lustery finish to it that can sort of transfer quite easily. Um, so be careful with that and plan your the order in which you do your lettering accordingly. So, for example, if you know your wrist is your hand is going to be here, don't start with these ones. I know it might seem obvious to start with the first letter. But it's not always the case. So some people go, might go, I might start with an easier letter. Um, but be mindful of where your hand is going to end up going. Trust me, I've been there. And I've ended up being like trying to paint <laughs> without being able to steady my hand on anything. It's also worth noting that if you are painting this directly on your cake, what I end up, my hand position, I'll show you on here. So I have a dummy just here. Um, my, say, for example, this here then had a tear on top of it that I was painting on here um, so I was painting on this surface here I would have this hand here and my painting hand here so I would rest this ever so lightly on the, on this tear and have my painting hand just resting or if it's lower down just rest it on the tear but be careful not to, to crush this tear um, so yeah just always try and it's a lot harder just having your hand hovering in midair than it is to have it anchored to something um especially if you're nervous because you might you might be shaking a little bit um nothing wrong with that okay are you all still with me hopefully you are just gonna check the comments great lots of brush chat excellent any problems <laughs> i know i should have checked my comments before now but I didn't, I got carried away painting. Okay, so we're just gonna, again, this is quite flowy, but you can see, I love you, as much, as beautiful as the luster, the luster paints, when you make your own paint, work on um, paler tones, they really, really pop their best when they're on a darker tone cake. So again, from a design point of view, just remember those things. So if someone's coming to you and with those colours in mind, um, quite often I'll say, oh, should we do a bit of a colour wash? So rather than the whole tier, 
be dark blue, which you know I, I absolutely nothing against that. I've done loads of cakes like that. Um, if they if they're not quite brave enough, if your clients aren't quite brave enough, or you get one or two that are just like, oh, I don't know if we really want like a dark blue cake, but you know that the gold or the silver is going to really pop against a darker tone. Um, you can maybe sort of encourage them to have like a section of color wash. Now this is coming off a little bit because it's freshly done. So again, just try, if it's a darker tone, just leave it a little bit. And because I just wiped my hands, so they're a little bit wet. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, you could absolutely also just have get a piece of parchment to rest your hand on. Which is probably what I should have done. Turn this round again so that I'm working at a different angle. Obviously, when this is your tier of cake, you don't necessarily have the luxury. If you notice how I stop talking every time I'm doing a really detailed. <laughs> yeah, you don't always have the luxury of obviously turning your, your work area around to suit you. Um, So just be mindful of um, your actual stencil when you're working because there are absolutely thinner bits and fatter bits to this stencil. So um, just be mindful of where you should be using those bits. So when you're wanting to fill in fatter bits, you can use your whole brush and press down. When you're wanting to do thinner bits, you're kind of just wanting to flow with that tip. You're not wanting to, to make, to bulk out um, bulk out the area by sort of pressing down the whole, the whole brush. But yeah, I'd be interested to know if any of you have done hand painted calligraphy before, or if any of you have, have sort of painted before, because I did not have a background in painting or calligraphy. I went on a calligraphy course and this, I'd already been hand painting on cakes and I was like, oh, I reckon I'd be able to turn my hand to actual calligraphy as well, because, you know, it'd be quite nice to, when I'm sending stuff out in the pose, to be able to just, you know, that little extra touch. Um, yeah, no, it's totally different. <laughs> and um, I wouldn't, I, I didn't struggle with it. I would definitely give it a go again, but I definitely need more practice. Um, it's just, I've, I like the flow of this. I like how you can flow with a brush. Um, I found the calligraphy lettering a bit more, um, found it, the, the nib of the pen, the calligraphy pen kept sort of catching on the paper and sort of stopping me flow. <laughs> Whereas obviously you don't have that with this because it's a smooth, you've buffed it to within an inch of its life and made your sugar paste really smooth. So yeah, <laughs> I struggled with it. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to know if any of you guys have um, are used to sort of using paint brushes or if you have if you can any anyone can do calligraphy like actual calligraphy they make it look if you've ever watched somebody do calligraphy they honestly make it look so easy and you go oh yeah i'm really into this this is going to be awesome and then you sit there in a room with other people trying to do it and you're like oh my god how does she do that um, I mean, I suppose that's the same with anything really, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not very good at not being competent at things. And so I, I personally found the experience quite frustrating, but, um, that's just me <laughs> and haven't opened up the kit I got with the class since, <laughs> which was quite a while ago. Stick to what you're good at. So hopefully you guys are seeing how gorgeous this is on the darker colour. How are we doing for time? Anyone give me a time check? Yeah, quite a few of you have been on calligraphy courses. 
Someone's going to have to give me a time check, I'm afraid, because neither of my screens are giving me the time at the moment. Okay, so the final letter. So you can see how I'm like quite easily building that that up in the, the thicker parts of the letters. If you're new to this, so some of my clients will come to me and say, this is our stationery. And they're really like gone all in on the stationery and it's stunning. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that, you know, let's, would you, would you be open to sort of incorporating some elements of your stationery? Because obviously stationery for me is one of the things that, you're, that a couple's guests will see from the very first save the day right through to the thank you cards. It's like the one consistent recurring design element. Um, so for me, it's great if you can uh, reflect elements of that um, in the wedding cake. So sometimes it's not, it's just not, stationery is not a thing for a couple. They're not that bothered or they're just doing their own and they're just, or they've just even got a wedding website and are using emails and stuff. That's fine. But if they're, if they really love it and they're really into fonts and stationery and calligraphy, then um, obviously I explore that with them. Um, some of them have then a specific font that they want and I say you know will it will match exactly will match it exactly um, and they will send me like the the PDF from their graphic designer or whatever and I'll resize it for the cake and away we go and it's beautiful here we go um, some of them they're like oh we really love your calligraphy lettering but we're not really having any sort of special stationery or anything so I say okay well which calligraphy styles out of the cakes I've done are you drawn to and we'll kind of they'll give me an indication because there are such different styles this I've done this one because it's quite it's not particularly thin and wispy but it's still beautiful and elegant um so for the for the actual demo you could see it but um if I was given a choice um when you're planning that if people say oh we're not we're not really bothered but we just really like like the flowing calligraphy because this is just like quite a nice romantic one um bear in mind like don't make it more difficult for yourself so bear in mind those when you're looking at fonts type out their names or whatever it is you're you're wanting to paint on your cake type them out on word have a few different options if they're giving you the option like the freedom to choose have a few different options and have a think about which ones are going to be, as well as obviously which ones are going to look best, which ones are going to be a headache for you, which ones are going to be more risky for you if you're not that confident yet, but you want to incorporate it in. Um, just be a bit strategic about your choices. If it, and, you know, it might be that they've got a very specific font or a, a specific monogram and that's fine. But yeah, if they don't and they're leaving it up to you, just be smart with your choices. <laughs> don't make it any harder for yourself than it already is. Um, it's not hard, it's just practice. Okay, so that's our finished love. And that's our finished A&H. Switch those around. So you can see. So two completely different looks. I'm going to wait till that catches up so you can see them. Yes, you can see them. Um, two completely different looks. I'm just going to see if that luster catches in the light there. Uh, yes, you can see that. Beautiful. Um, but it just pops so much more against the darker colour. I've done them on all different colours. So um, I've also custom mixed colours as well. So with the petal dust and the luster dust, you can absolutely mix them. So I've just used them straight out, the, the tubs at the moment. But um, the luster dust, there's so many of them. Uh, like what is, what is called rose gold to one person might look quite coppery to another. So just bear that in mind. Order your luster dust. I quite like the fake. Carhill ones, if that's a name, um, and uh, I do quite like them, they're quite nice, um, but they, there's such a range of them. What is this one? This is Signature Gold, if anyone wants to know, um, but she does obviously have a range of them, so it, it you need to, I've, I've had some that are rose gold that for me I think are quite orangey and coppery, and so I've mixed them with a bit of the standard gold to just tone it down a bit, take that sort of orange down a bit. Um, but it just depends on on your choices and your styling. You might love that kind of more coppery, orangey tinge. Um, 
But yeah, just because something is called something, don't be fooled into thinking it's gonna look what you consider to be a rose gold or a copper or an antique gold. Order some and try them out. Um, so yeah, and it also might look different on different backgrounds as well. So just bear that in mind and always just do a test piece. So for example, yesterday, I just tested that blue with some freehand um, on here. So just, so there's some little numbers. So sometimes people want their initials and like their numbers, you know, the dates. Um, I was gonna write 20 there and I couldn't bring myself to do it because as if there's gonna be any weddings this year. Um, <laughs> so I just stopped, <laughs> it was too depressing. Um, so yeah, you, that's all just done freehand, but sometimes people want their uh, letter, their numbers done, not their numbers, their dates, their wedding dates. Um, written beneath their monogram and that's really nice and I just tend to do them freehand um but that's me so yeah obviously I've done a lot of painting onto cakes before but yeah any questions I'm gonna come on or is there anything else you want to quickly see I'm just gonna go through 11 50 40 okay so we're nearly out of time anyway um so let's see if there's any questions popped up okay right back to the beginning hello 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 Oh, good, Anna. I'm glad you got your sound back. Did you say wisdom script? Okay, so yes, wisdom script. It's just on Word. Um, so this one was wisdom for the calligraphy. You can see that I've just lost some of the gold. So the gold's just come off that. So I was just going to remove it. Wisdom script and um, Baskerville old face for the other one. It sounds awful, doesn't it? it sounds really awful. Um, so yes, that was them. Uh, what else? So with fonts, I've also uploaded a few specific fonts of my own. Um, I'm actually gonna move this camera around because you're not really looking at anything anymore, are you? Bear with me, people. Bear with. <laughs> this could all go wrong right at the last minute. <laughs> um, okay, and up, oh, yay, we're back. Um, yes, I did miss a call from the builder. <laughs> uh, what colour is the dark blue? The dark blue is uh, Squire's Kitchen Wisteria. I know that will be backwards for you guys, probably. Um, what else? Uh, uh, uh. Anyone else will sound in the script? How do you do this on a darker colour bonding? Hopefully, Mira, I have answered that now. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed you've seen that. Um, it is warm in here. <laughs> Top floor, it is warm. Um, can you use rejuvenator fluid? I never have, Fiona. Um, I'm sure there might be other people in the group that have. I never have. I've always just used the lemon extract because it gives me really good results. Gosh, my face is shiny. And um, dries so quick that I can just, you know, if it needed a second coat, if you want to build that color up, say for example, if you're doing the lighter blue, to guide you and then the darker blue on top, it's really good for that because you can literally get to the end of your letters, go back to the beginning and start again. Um, I'm, 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 I'm. I missed the beginning. Is there a reason it's in the mirror image? Yes, it is. It's just because, um, so I can see the questions on the screen. So the camera is re reversed. Sorry for that. It's just because of recording cameras and reverse, but no, do it. don't do it in the reverse image. Um, do you lie the real cake on its side to do it? No, Irene, I never have done that um, just because it's risky. So like I demoed before, hopefully I've covered that. I just have it in front of me. Now, what it is worth noticing is if, mentioning rather, if you are doing it on your cake pre-stacked, um, your cake will be at worktop height and you'll be stood in front of it and you will be bending down and you'll be at all, your eyes will be at a weird angle. So I always get a few big cake dummies stack them and put the tear on top of that so it's eye height so I'm not having to bend down because honestly if you're in pain you'll rush and you'll make mistakes or if you're at a weird angle you'll just make mistakes um or you just won't be able to see if things are level or even so make sure that you do that um so that you're always working at eye level both for your own comfort and for precision um, but if you're working on a stack cake and it's at the right height then then go for it um 
where do you get your brushes from? You may have said already. Um, I get them from all over Kerry. Um, I just kind of hold them. So anytime I'm in Hobbycraft, I pick up a load because, because they're such fine brushes, when you, obviously because I'm using them and washing them a lot, um, the bristles will, you know, it's not, it doesn't take that long before you end up with a lot fewer bristles on there. So I do tend to just stock up anytime I'm at Hobbycraft, but you can get them at Kate Decorating stores online. If you just go onto them and, and type in the search bar brushes, but make sure you're getting the really like treble zero, double zero ones, um, or Amazon or where was the other one? Not home bargain. Oh, I can't remember. It's one of those kind of stores. Uh, I'll, it'll come to me straight after this. I'm sure of it. Um, yeah, Amazon's a great option. Have you just bought some lovely ones on Amazon? A pack of, oh, great Leah. Um, I painted on the day too. Yeah, me too, Carrie. Don't tell the brides. Uh, I did a night class and decided to leave it to the experts. It's tricky, isn't it, Fiona? I went a calligraphy course 18 months ago, loved it. Got a gorgeous calligraphy set for Christmas, haven't used it yet. Yeah, it's tricky. What colour is the dark blue? I've covered that. Um, thanks so much, Fiona. Brilliant. Sorry, I'm confused about lemon extract versus alcohol. Did you just say the lemon extract dries faster because of a higher alcohol content? Yes, I did, Mira. So, um, you can use, if you're in other countries, so whenever I'm in Spain, I will absolutely pick up, they just sell it in the supermarkets, like rubbing alcohol. It's a, they don't sell it here because I think it, they don't allow it because it's like almost pure alcohol and it's dirt cheap. So anytime I'm like in Spain or anywhere like that where they sell it, you could just wander into the supermarket or like a pharmacy and it's so cheap compared to this. Um, so this is like five quid a bottle and obviously you don't use a lot at all, but still. Uh, so when I'm on holiday, I just stock up on that and then it runs out when it runs out. But obviously I chuck it all in my suitcase, but it is almost pure alcohol. So they don't allow it to be sold just on supermarket shelves. And because obviously, I don't know, teenagers could buy it or whatever. Um, but you can use rub rubbing alcohol if you get it in other countries. But the alcohol the level in vodka and stuff is not high enough because it would kind of blind you if you drank it. Um, so... Yeah, it, it just dries much, much quicker. So it's less streaky. So you get less of a streaky finish on your lettering. So if you use an, uh, like a vodka on it, you might, you might see that you have to go over it a few times. Now for me, that's just having to go over things more and more times just means that you're more likely to make a mistake. There's more opportunity for you to go outside the lines or make a mistake. So for me, I'd rather just not have to keep revisiting it and layering up that color. No problem, Rosa. The range, the range is where I was thinking. Yes, Mira. Is there a certain bristle type you use? Mine is synthetic and too hard. Um, I don't know what these are. They're, it says pure sablés, S-A-B-L-E on it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but um, have a look for those, Google that. S-A-B-L-E, pure sablé. Um, but yeah, some of them are definitely synthetic, but they like most of them are sort of like this yellowy color. So have a look out for those. Um, but the sable ones tend to be dark like that. So I think they're like real hair of some kind of creature. I don't know. Um, I bought some Tesco recently. Great. I used dipping solution, but it turned black paint purple. I just used gel color. So we'll try dust instead. Yeah, try the dust. I find that the dust, if you get, they're much easier to get to the right consistency and therefore they're less likely to bleed. Um, I had a, one or two questions. Somebody sent me an email this week. Um, what if you completely mess up and ruin the cake? Do you recover? In, do you recover the tear and start again? Uh, not if I can avoid it. So I covered that already. Like with the, you can remove with some clear alcohol and a cotton bud. Um, but again, don't do that with water because it will take forever to um, dry, and in the meantime, it will be soaking into your sugar paste, and it will leave like a watermark on there. Um, can I use oil based paints for calligraphy? I love oil based paints, but try and avoid them for calligraphy because they're th much thicker and they just, they'll give you a much, they won't give you the finesse that you need for calligraphy. Um, I would be too nervous to do this directly on a cake. Yeah, I know I've been there. Any suggestions on somewhere I can practice other than a wedding cake? Yeah, absolutely. So when I first started, I would actually paint it. I would cut out a piece of sugar paste like this to so cover my cake cut out a piece of sugar paste like this, paint it to the point I got it how I wanted it. Then I would cover this, I would cut round this into a plaque, 
stick that on very carefully onto the front of my cake and then I used like the silicon moulds to create like a moulded border which I then painted like gilded or whatever to, to hide the join so it looked like I painted direct on the cake but I'd actually cut out a plaque, a pre-painted plaque that I knew was perfect and then cut it out and stuck it on very carefully like only touching, like pre pressing on around these bits not actually touching the lettering, adhering it onto the cake just with some edible glue or piping gel and then creating a border to hide, you know, with, with silicon or you can pipe around it or whatever with silicon moulds or hand piping. Um, Sable pronounced Sable, oh, Kerry, that doesn't help me at all. Sable, I don't know. Don't laugh at me. Um, um, the other way of doing it is to practice on cookies or just practice like I've done there. So um, yeah, just definitely give yourself a practice run. If you've got initials or um, a monogram or something, practice, practice, practice. It's the only way that you'll feel comfortable. And even then, sometimes I'm just not in the right frame of mind, hence me then leaving it to the next morning. So if I'm super, super exhausted, if I've been working on a cake for days and it's nearly finished and the only thing I've got to do is paint those initials on, um, but I'm exhausted, I'm more likely to make a mistake. So I will leave it till the next morning. And that's the only reason. Sable-like table. Thank you, Mira. <laughs> Sable-like table. That's what I need. Sable, yeah. Sable-like table. Um, that's what I need. Really dumb it down for me because... The... <laughs> I don't know. I don't have an art art background. Uh, very much kind of was encouraged to do the whole academic route, but you know, it's fine. Uh, I learned loads of different things instead. But yeah, I don't have an artistic background. So when it comes to what things are called and stuff like that, I don't know. I'm still learning. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Unless there's any other questions, um, <laughs> everyone's having a debate about how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, it, I think it is horse hair. It does, it does feel like real, real hair um, compared to some of the others. But just figure out which ones you're comfortable with, which ones move in the way that you like for your style. Um, but definitely get the thin ones. You really, like, I can't um, explain, like, how important that is because otherwise you will just, it will look far too sort of chunky and clumsy. Um, and calligraphy is supposed to be elegant and flowy. Um, and obviously that that's, the kind of look that people are wanting. Made from the hair of the Kalinsky, which is a special species of weasel found. The oh my gosh, Caroline, I'm loving this. This is so good. Um, yeah, I love all your knowledge. It's amazing. Um, Caroline, do you have an art background? Is that is that how you know this stuff? Have you please tell me you've Googled that rather than you know this stuff because that's putting me to shame. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's about it for questions. If I've missed any off or if there's anything else you want to know, please let me know. Um, if Please also go and try this. Honestly, it's not that scary. Um, and before long, you will be confident to do freehand. Um, oh, Google, thank God, Caroline. <laughs> I thought you were some kind of like egghead genius. Um, I'm sure you are anyway, but uh, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, she's like a quiz master. Um, anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope we I didn't mind all the jiggery pokery with the camera. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to make sure that you guys could see what I was doing. So um, hopefully you were for the most part. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing, Caroline. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else you want um, to know about it, or if you give it a go and you struggle, um, please do let me know. I'm obviously here to help. And obviously, while I'm not doing wedding cakes, I have time to help you guys. So please take advantage of it. Um, also, I just wanted to quickly mention before you all disappear, because I know some of you have had to go already, um, I have started a Facebook page and an Instagram page for the Sugarcraft School. So please go give those a, a follow. So I know some of you are already following me on Facebook as my internet cakes, but there is a Sugarcraft School one now so please go look that up and also the sugarcraft school on instagram um so because i'm gonna try and not post uh tutorial stuff on my uh instagram wedding cake page much longer so please go uh follow this the new instagram on the sugarcraft school on instagram because before long i'll just be posting tutorial stuff just on that instagram account but I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I did a live. Um, I'm planning another one for next week as well. So please keep your eyes peeled for that. And like I say, any questions in the meantime, just holler. Have an amazing weekend. I hope the weather stays like this. And um, yeah, whatever you've got planned for the weekend, I hope it's fab. Let me know if you're doing any cake stuff. I can't wait to hear. All right, see you soon. Bye.